Come and eat and feast. Come to my table and eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a little more volume here. Amen. I have prepared for you a feast. I want to commune with you. Let me show myself to you. Come to my table and eat. Praise the Lord. We're feasting on the wine of rarity. It's rare. And it's so fine. And it's new wine that we've been called. I tell you what, God dumped a barrel after barrel after barrel on this place Sunday. Amen. My God, I said before church tonight, we had two mighty gracious crowds. They're good crowds. And I guess they got so much canned up, it just was still bubbling in them tonight. And they, they, uh, we'll believe it. That's what, where everybody is, won't we? We'll just believe it. Sister Heffern said they're all on shift work. Amen. She said when she preached her first revival, it was in the mountains, and she couldn't understand why the people had come and dance and get happy in the song service. Then when she got up to preach, they all go gather up their kids and leave. And she said, I was only uh, 17 or 18, and that just hurt me so bad. And she said, I found out at the end of the week, most of them worked in the coal uh, mines on the midnight shift, and they come for what they could get in and then had to leave. So she said, from then on out, if I ever seen anybody leave one of the meetings, I'd just say to somebody, oh, it's okay, they're on the midnight shift. They've got to go to work. Praise the Lord. But we're not out to lunch tonight. In fact, we're ready to receive yeah. the word of the Amen. kingdom of God. Preaching on this one more message, maybe, if it can get wrapped up enough to leave it to go into further things. The mystery of the kingdom. I've enjoyed these three messages so far. I wonder sometimes if when people are approached by another that says, what do you mean when you say, your preacher preaches the kingdom word. And your church believes the kingdom word. I wonder sometimes if everybody would be able to give an answer. And say this is what we believe. The Bible tells us we've got to have an answer for all things. And have an answer for all men. And if somebody wants to know why you believe what you believe. The only way you can truly answer them is chapter and verse. You cannot answer them correctly just by saying, well, that's just what my church believes. Because for so long, that is why we believe what we believe. Because we were told what to believe. But now then, in the kingdom age of God, there are men and women who are free to think with the mind of Christ. And we are perceiving by the Spirit mighty truths that have been ours all along. And we are seeing no longer through a glass darkly, but we are seeing then and which was now face to face. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And no longer is the thing spoken to us in a mystery and anything that's still mysterious to us. We know by the Holy Ghost that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. How be it in the Spirit he speaks out mysteries. Amen. Amen. And if we believe that we can pray in the Holy Ghost realm until God lifts up the blinders off of our supernatural understanding and allows us to see into a world that's been shut for years and years that angels desire to look into and prophets of old desire to look into but we now hallelujah they who upon the ends of the world have come have arisen to walk in a day of light and a day of in understanding glory to God and we have been brought unto the kingdom for such a time as this hallelujah for such a time as this. I want you to find one scripture, just one scripture tonight in James 5 of your Bibles. Hallelujah. And I want to, I'm just going to read one verse there after I say what I'm fixing to say in James 5 and 7. And I want to tell you the reason why I'm going to say it is because we're facing the base scripture of this, these messages on the kingdom are coming to us out of Matthew 24 where Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell you something before I go.
go any further. I believe in a kingdom harvest. But I want to tell you what I believe that means. Uh, first of all, if you ask most ministers, especially anybody in the world view perspective, if they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom, they'd tell you without a doubt, yes, I am. And they back up what they say by the fact that they're getting the harvest in. Of course, they mean usually when they say that, nobody else is, but they're getting the harvest in. But the trouble is, what is not that they believe in a harvest, folks, but it's what they believe that harvest is that's totally off sync with the Bible. First of all, they believe that harvest is getting thousands and thousands of people to walk down an aisle and repeat a prayer after a minister. And after that prayer is repeated, they mark them down on a card as a harvest. This is a harvest we got in. They say it's a harvest of souls. The second thing they believe about the harvest is that in any minute, Jesus is going to stop the harvesting. They rush with everything they've got in them. Every bit of adrenaline that pumps through them is based upon a fear that they won't get all the harvest in before Jesus comes and takes everybody away. Now I'm going to talk blunt for you tonight. It's probably good just us chickens is here in this room. I'm going to speak blunt to you, okay? Because I don't think we need to be left in the dark on this stuff. Number one, that ain't the harvest. Now when that thuds, I'll say the next line. If that was the harvest, you tell me what you were to have sense enough to know that if you go out there and gather you up a bunch of seed and sow it, and it's young seed, that ain't the harvest. That's the first part of it what you're looking for, but it ain't the harvest. The harvest is the full-grown crop. The harvest is the coming to maturity. The harvest is it growing up into perfection. This is why Jesus said, let the wheat and the tare grow together. Because you can't tell them apart until it's time for the harvest. And when it's time for the harvest, the tare falls over and the wheat stays standing. Glory to God. And Jesus said the wheat he'll gather into his garner and the chaff he'll burn up with unquenchable fire. Everybody say praise the Lord if you believe that. I mean the harvest is not somebody who just got saved. That ain't the harvest. My brother and my dad and I were invited to go to, we probably would never get this opportunity again, but we were invited at that time. Some folks still thought we had it. And they invited us to go over to a big uh, convention in town that was going on. And we kind of waited for things just to not make us seen and snuck through the side gate, if you will, and got in and was looking for a good seat in towards the back quarters of the room. And we were greeted by their usher that was in charge. It said, I was told if you come through the door to take you and whoever was with you to the platform. I said, well, thank you kindly, but we didn't come to sit on the platform. We, we just come to be a part of the, of the congregation and be blessed in the Word. And he said, no, sir, I was told if y'all come in the door. And then he went and checked and come back and said, yes, yes y'all you, you, are to go sit on the platform. Well, we got on the platform. There's two reasons, and I won't tell you all of them why I didn't want to sit on the platform. Well, one reason, I didn't know what was going to come out, and I didn't know if I wanted to be associated with that or not. And when we were sitting on the, we finally found the back row of the platform. There's three rows of chairs. They proceeded to talk about a witnessing program. And in that, one girl got up was just overly excited because she had been to Walmart and had won, uh, I don't forget how many people, to Jesus. And she told her how she done it. She said, all you got to do is go up. And she said, I had a paper in my hand of what to say. And I stopped this, would stop this person and say, hello, how are you? My name's so-and-so. Would you like to see Jesus as your Savior? If you would, please say he's worth after me and you'll be saved. And of course, they said them after her, probably, so she'd leave them alone 
and, and where they could get onto their cars. Never give them a moment to make a decision. Never give them a nothing. In the first place, folks, no man can't come to God except the Spirit draws him. And you can't call Jesus Lord but by one avenue, and that's by the what? The Holy Ghost. Isn't that what the Word said? All right, when all that got over with, there had been a great deal of people dancing and shouting, and, and they came down to pray the a sinner's prayer, and, and them the people that was talking in tongues and laying hands on folks while the meeting was going on here. They all come down to pray the sinner's prayer all over again. That gave you the sense right there that they weren't being given a gospel that convinced them that they were in the kingdom, but they were being constantly led to believe that they had to do something else to get God to be pleased with them. I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. God is pleased with you. He's not upset with you. He's not angry with you. He's not mad with you. He's not holding nothing against you. In fact, anything that stood between you and Him, He took it out of the way Himself, nailing it to His cross, yeah. and blotted out the handwriting of oh, ordinances that were against us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, needless to say, the Lord quickly provided a way out of that. And Dad looked around behind the curtain and, or went to the bathroom or something and noticed the exit door. Very accessible. So he come up and told me, said, the Lord made a way of escape that we may be able to bury him. And we hopped up and got gone. But I, what I wanted you to see was, in their mind, if they didn't hurry out there and get that harvest in, God was going to cut it short. And they was going, I'm going to tell you what they believed. They believe all them ones they didn't reach was going to burn in hell for eternity because they didn't have a chance to pray the sinner's prayer. Now you see what I'm talking about? I believe in the kingdom harvest, but I don't believe that's it. I believe the harvest, glory to God, is a full-grown sons of God coming to maturity on this earth and power and in demonstration of the Spirit. And I believe that there's a first part of that harvest, a first fruit that has to come to fruition first. And after they do, then they'll bring in such a reality of God that just the one sowing the seed is going to overtake the reaper and the one doing the reaping, glory to God, is going to instantly have to make way for new seed to come in because the Bible says that if you'll sow to the heaven, the Lord said, I'll sow to the earth and you will hear the sound of corn and of wine and of oil in the earth. And that's the tabernacle ministry. Now, here's why, what I want to tell you. Number one, if God's got a harvest on, you won't like this, but I'll have to say it, He ain't coming and tearing up that harvest He's got on. If He's waiting on a harvest, why would He come cut everything off before the harvest came to its full fruition? It don't make no sense. So backing up what I just said, if you'll read this verse with me in James 5 and 7, thinking on the fact that everybody's rushing like mad to get a harvest in because Jesus is mad with everybody that ain't in his harvest and as soon as he can get here, he's going to rip out a few that he thinks are worthy and the rest of them to hell with them. That's what they preach. That's what they believe. Well, I want to tell you, that's not the God I serve. Praise the Lord. I just love your enthusiasm tonight, but that's not the God I serve. I want to read you this verse. Be patient. I mean, that's the first words is don't get in a hurry. Everybody said, get that money in here. We've got just so much time to get. Amen. And then the Lord said, don't get in a hurry. Be patient. Somebody say, praise the Lord. You know what that word in the margin of my Bible where it defines words out a little fuller, it says, be long patient. Well, hallelujah. Suffer with long patience unto the coming of the Lord. For behold, the husbandman waiteth for, he's waiting on something. 
I said he's waiting on something. I'm telling you, glory be to God, the coming of the Lord is not any minute, but he's waiting on something. What's he waiting on? The precious fruit of the earth. And he hath. Not only is he telling us not to hurry, he's about to tell us he's not going to get in a hurry. He hath long patience. Oh, glory be to Jesus. And for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Well, glory to God. So when we use this scripture, this gospel of the kingdom, not just said the gospel, but this gospel, meaning the very gospel that Jesus preached, which was a kingdom gospel. He said when it's preached in all the world, then will come the end, which means the consummation of the ages. Glory to God. Then said the Lord, will I reveal thy full plan in this earth. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Lord said, you don't get in a hurry because I'm not getting in a hurry. God. It ain't just any day now. Brother, sister, hallelujah. Get kingdom minded. If I could get 20 people as, as kingdom minded or as they are rapture minded, Oh, could we have a meeting. Yes. We'd tear the walls down. Yes. All right. I just had to open. I felt compelled to open that that way because there's a great confusion in this earth over what the harvest is. The harvest, hurry up and get it in. Rains is coming. The storms are coming. Hurry up and get it in. Well, Jesus said, don't hurry. And he said, I'm not going to hurry. He said, I'm waiting patiently for the fruit of the earth. I'm glad he didn't just say the fruit of the Pentecost or the fruit of the church of God or the fruit of the one God. Our Brother Hall said, church without God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's waiting for the whole earth to hear the gospel. Glory to Jesus' name of the kingdom. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Now, when we left Sunday, we were dealing with the fact that in the Bible, there's no difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. It's one and the same. And contrary to popular opinion, it ain't one for the Gentile and one for the Jew. But the Bible teaches us there is no Jew nor Greek in Christ, but all are one. Amen. And so we've come into a day with no prejudice and no racism in God. There is no creed or custom or color or nationality or pedigree in God, but the blood has made us one. Amen. Amen. And so in Luke 22 and 29, when Jesus said, I appoint unto you a kingdom, even as my Father hath appointed unto me. He was saying to us in essence, the same thing I've got, you've got. I'm not giving away a different kingdom. But the kingdom is the kingdom. There's only one kingdom and he gave it over to us and I point it unto you. The phrase kingdom is used 153 times in the New Testament. Out of that 153, 123 of them are in the four gospels in the teaching of Jesus. And 54 out of that 123 is in the gospel of Matthew alone because that's the first gospel that's written. And in that gospel, Jesus gets us acquainted with kingdom living, kingdom thinking, kingdom speaking, kingdom walking, kingdom teaching. Everything about Jesus is the kingdom, brother. If you hang around Jesus, you're going to learn what the kingdom is. The first thing we have to learn is that the old mindset, everybody say the old mindset, the old mindset cannot receive the gospel of the kingdom. Can't do it. For this reason, when the Lord came to Zechariah, he warned him, 
that John was not going to preach in the streets of Jerusalem or in the temple, but that he would be the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. By all right from law and genealogy, John should have toted the same name as his father and fell into the next in line as a Levite or a priest in the temple of God who burned incense. But the Lord shutting the mouth of Zechariah would not allow him to speak. And when Elizabeth delivered, they were getting ready to name the baby. And they were no doubt getting ready to put the father's name on that baby. Glory to God. But Zechariah, by the Holy Ghost, knew that he had to come under a new name. It had to break the line right there. The priesthood was changing. Everybody say that. The priesthood was changing. Another priesthood was coming in. Hallelujah. A kingdom and dominion was coming forth in the earth. And the saints were going to possess it forever and forever. And the Lord said to Zechariah, go get that uh, a slate over there and write the name John on it. And when he wrote the name John, the Lord loosed his tongue and he began to speak the things uh, that God had laid in his heart telling them that he would mark the sign of a new generation uh, and a new people that something uh, was going to be different. Uh, he would not preach in the synagogue but out in the wilderness. Uh, he would call men out of that realm of religion. Uh, call them out uh, of that old order and bid them come and repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. The word repent, metanoia, change your mind. Come out of her, my people. You won't come into this kingdom without you come out of something. You can't mix the two together. You can't preach the fullness of this power in the realms of religion. They're not going to receive you. But if you'll get in the wilderness, even if you start out with a faithful few, if you'll be faithful to lift your voice up day and night and decree and declare the word of the kingdom, God will cause the hungry inside to begin to hear that call of the Spirit. And they'll come out and say, what are you? Who are you? And he said, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Glory to Oh. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He said to them, the kingdom is at hand. Yes, that means in the literal, it's coming towards you. It's approaching you. It's drawing nigh unto you. Glory to God. In other words, Jesus was standing there <coughs> ready to be revealed. Who revealed Him? Glory to God. Was not John the one baptizing Jesus? When the heavens opened, oh hallelujah, and the Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove, and the voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John baptized Jesus, said, For suffer it to be so, for thus it fulfilleth all righteousness. John couldn't baptize you in to anything, but he could baptize you unto something, and that unto was unto the hour when the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world would be unveiled and revealed in this earth as he who held the kingdom and the power to give it unto somebody in this earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Magi, mighty men, men of knowledge, men who knew the times, men anointed by God, had enough sense to drop it all and go by revelation because they said, we've seen his star and he's the king. They called him the king. Mary's baby, eight pounds of God Almighty. Eight pounds of deliverance and power. Eight pounds of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Eight pounds yeah. of the kingdom. Yeah. Glory to God. Laying in that manger with calves of loathing. Hallelujah. Sheep bleating and doves cooing all night. Lay the kingdom of God in power, in majesty, in might. Glory to God. And in the smell of wet hay and morning dew. Glory to God. Men of renown. Men of power. Men of power in this earth. Could denote that there was 
was a king among them who had power to set something up in this earth that would never be tore down again. The annunciation message from Gabriel to Mary was of his kingdom there shall be no end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Another, listen, there were two people that lived in that temple day and night. Simeon one, Anna was the other. Anna was a widow woman who had devoted the rest of her life to fasting and prayer in the temple and prophecy. Simeon was a man of God, well stricken in years, but God showed him by revelation that he would not be put in the grave until he saw that kingdom come until he saw the Lord's Christ. Amen. And the Bible said when they brought Jesus on the eighth day for the circumcision and to name him that Simeon didn't come by coincidence. He didn't come just because it was time to go but he came up by the Spirit at the same hour that they brought Jesus into that temple and he grabbed that baby out of Mary's arms held him in his hand knowing he was embracing the way out of the law and the way over into the new day of the living kingdom said Lord now let thy servant depart in peace for mine eyes have seen thy salvation glory to God Anna the prophetess of God came and held the child glory to God and said those words of Isaiah about arising and shining. She said, this is the light that is prophesied who will come to those who sit in darkness and release them from their prison hole. And she said, this child is set for a falling. He's going to fall. He's going to be let down. He's going to go to the lower part of the earth. But she said, not just for a fall, but for a rising. Hallelujah. He's going to come up again. Yes. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. glory. Ain't no way to hold this stuff back now. You'll just have to endure it. Amen. We consider yet another important aspect in dealing with the kingdom. When the Bible says kingdom of heaven, it should be plural. Heavens. Not just heaven. Heaven is not a city floating around beyond one of the planets. The heavens are spiritual domains and dimensions of the kingdom where there is all power, all authority, where God rules and reigns, and where mankind can be restored to a mindset to think the thoughts of God and produce what He is in this earth. Heavens. Paul went to the third heaven. Jesus ascended far above all heavens. The next time you hear someone say, I want to go to heaven, ask them which heaven they want to go to. And when their eyes get through twirling, tell them there happens to be more than one. There's realms and dimensions of God we've not yet even tasted of. Oh, glory to God. That makes me want to go hunt a ladder, don't you? I want Jacob's ladder. I hear angels ascending and descending, giving revelation to our heart. And I can tell you there's realms of the Spirit we've not yet climbed into. We've climbed mighty high in these Holy Ghost meetings. We've climbed so high sometimes it gets hazy out here. Hard to see the people because the glory is so thick. We've climbed so high that our feet have felt like feathers as we danced in the Spirit and ran and worshipped God. We've climbed so high those gifts God has revealed signs and wonders in our midst and it's been absolutely uh, phenomenal and overwhelming to see the glory of God but to know that never will Will we run out of dimensions uh, of pursuing uh, the depth uh, of the riches uh, of the heavens? Hallelujah. And the heavens, plural, were open when Jesus came forth. Not the heaven. The heavens. We walk in them. We talk in them. Oh, glory to God. He, by faith, took creation into the water, bearing them to the old round. Hallelujah. Every time, every time, Jesus went into some great accomplishment, He's taken His creation with Him. He's not going alone as a man, but He's taken a people with Him. He'll die with a people. He'll descend with a people. He will resurrect with a people. Glory to God. And He will ascend with a people. 
And he'll sit down with them people in heavenly places. Glory to God. Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Jesus only preached one subject. The kingdom. Have you ever read your Bible? Have you ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Find one place in there where Jesus is preaching and something don't give reference to the kingdom. Whenever they wanted to hang around, Jesus said, No, i got to go. i got to go in this next town so I can preach the kingdom. Somebody in here, listen, them people in that old round today, can somebody tell them so-and-so's preaching the kingdom and they get so upset over that, they just think they've lost their salvation. They're just absolutely turning their back on God. Jesus must have turned his back on God because everywhere he went, he preached the kingdom. Yeah. Right. When anybody said, where are you going? Jesus said, I'm going to preach the kingdom. But I want to say to you right here, some vitally important. Hallelujah. The preaching of the kingdom does not just mean preaching the doctrine. There ain't just word and deed, there's power. So the preaching of the kingdom is only one third preaching doctrine. Right. Hallelujah. There's another part of it. Teaching. Yeah. There's preaching and then there's teaching. Yeah. Holy Ghost teaching. Right. Revealed by the Spirit. And then the third part is the healing. Healing the sick. Yeah. Healing all manner of diseases. Jesus went into their synagogue teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Healing all manner of sickness and diseases and casting out devils. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Part of this kingdom ministry is laying hands on people and getting them healed. Part of this ministry is calling spirits out of people and bringing their spirit under subjection to the Holy Spirit. Can you say praise the Lord? You know, hallelujah, Lord. I'll give you these scriptures. 1 Corinthians 4.20 the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's 14.11 in the Strong's Concordance Dictionary and it's dunamis power. Inherited power. Power that you don't produce, but it reproduces constantly in you. There, in, the, in the Gospels, there's two kinds of power. Everybody say two kinds. There's exousia power and then dunamis power. Now, when Jesus sent the twelve out, he gave them exousia power. That means authority. Yeah. He covered them. They were under his cover. Yeah. They healed the sick. They cast out devils. They raised the dead. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> they gave up that power. There were moments when they faltered in their faith. One man had a son bound by the devil that he cast himself into a fire and oftentimes was hurt and he brought them to the disciples and they said we could cast him out and Jesus said oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you and then turning to the child said come out of him and instantly the boy fell down they thought he was dead but Jesus got him by the hand, picked him back up again, and presented them to this father. When the disciples come unto Jesus and said, Master, why could not we cast out that spirit? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Now did they have a word of power? Sure they did. They had exousia power. Such as if I was in going to the king, work for the king, and he said to me, go to this particular providence and collect a fee of tax, and here's a paper giving you clearance through every checkpoint with my name on it, and they went out. And we know they went in his name because when they came back, they said, Lord, even the devils are something done to us through your name. But he said, don't rejoice over that. Right. Yea, rather rejoice because your names are written. Because you've been recorded. Right. Hallelujah. In my life. Yeah. 
And because of my life, I'm going to give you a power yeah. over all the power. Somebody say amen. And they went to uh, forth in this exousia of power. But then the day came when they'd be required to function in those, not just the outflow of the power, but the source of the power. Right. And dunamis is the source of all power. And if you've got kingdom power, then it's dunamis power. It don't run short and it don't run shy. Uh, God, if you get up on Monday morning and feel like a dump truck has run over your head twice, amen, it don't change the fact that the anointing that you've received abideth in you and you have no need that any man teach you anything, but he that abideth in you will teach you all things. Somebody say amen. So the power, the kingdom comes not in word, but in power. I've heard people could give the best talk on the kingdom you ever heard, but they're so boring and dead till it just puts you to sleep to hear them uh, talk, you know. You just couldn't handle it. It just drives you crazy. I don't know how anybody sleeps around here. I couldn't sleep around here, hallelujah, if I'd stayed up for three nights because the Holy Ghost is in this place and about the time I'd try to fall over, I'd feel it pop me real good and I'd come alive with power. But you see, I'm interested in what the Lord is, is doing in this hour. So if anybody talks kingdom, I'm also boy, I get on the edge of my seat. I mean, if I'm time, my next time to mirror, and I hear a preacher on TV say kingdom, I stop everything I'm doing and listen to what he's going to say. Sometimes when he's through, I said, I wish he'd shut up. But sometimes when he's through, I said, my God, I'll they ought to replay that about a hundred times and let some of these people get a vision. I think Miles Monroe ought to be speaking to people everywhere. I think Lynn Hiles ought to preach in every church, but I think you ought to start in this one. Before he goes to anybody else, hey, man, I think I'm going to see, can I work the Lord into getting him, talk the Lord into getting him down here to preach us a good message for three or four days. Can you say amen? But what I'm saying to you is that that kingdom can't just come in word. You've got to demonstrate that thing. These people that, listen, you can't just preach a kingdom and never move into gifts, never lay hands on people, never see people get blessed. People are supposed to fall out. It's a Pentecostal environment. They ought to fall out. They ought to dance. They ought to shout. They ought to speak in tongues. They ought to give messages in tongues. Shame on these preachers that don't let their people get up and move into gifts and flow in prophecy and give tongues and messages and stuff such as that. My God, we need revelation gifts operating in the church. Hallelujah. We need people to know something just not because somebody called on the hotline and told them about it, but because the voice of the kingdom within yeah. them spoke and said, this is what I plan to do. Glory to God. We need preachers that know how to pray until they see a vision and when they see what God's going to do, then declare that thing by faith and step out in the spirit. My God, if all those heflings up in the backwoods of Virginia with no education hardly can set up there and see visions and go from one end of this globe to the other and, and deliver and get people full of the Holy Ghost, then I'd say that's better than me just taking a little food that might suffice them for a week or two. Brother, I'd rather go plant the kingdom in them places and if they'll learn the kingdom then everything they need will be added unto them because if the kingdom's first, then everything falls in alignment and perspective with the will of God. Amen. Matthew 12, 28, Jesus speaking to himself said, if I drive out the devils with a finger of God, then has the kingdom come unto you. Glory to God. Now he didn't say if I let devils vomit in the service. I mean, we paid good money for this carpet. We're not just going to stand around here and watch somebody throw up a phony devil. They're throwing up because they're nauseated. They're not throwing up because of the devil. In the first place, people's got the Holy Ghost. People that's born again ain't got to worry about the devil. If you're in the kingdom, there ain't no devil in the kingdom. The devil ain't running around this meeting tonight. And I'm not going into these churches where they always hunt a demon spirit to discern it. Because the truth is, if they had anything, any discernment, they'd be able to discern the Holy Spirit. Amen. They'd be able to say, I feel God is in this place. I feel the anointings in this place. Instead, they got their antenna up. Hunting, which, who's, who's got a love spirit? Who's got a 
demon spirit. Who's got a this, that, and the other? Praise the Lord. At one time, they were to move through this country and there's all brain paper sacks to church with them. Because if they happened to have a devil and the man could cast it out and they could spit him up in that paper sack. How stupid. Brother Hayden said, bless our darling hearts and stupid heads. Amen. Well, glory to God. So, so if, if look, if you're going to hang around Jesus, you can't hate the kingdom message because all he preaches is kingdom. And then when he gets through preaching it, he's going to demonstrate what he just preached. If there's any sick present, he's going to heal them. He's not going to pray no long prayer for them. He's going to heal them. He's not going over there and say, Now, Father, we do ask Thee in Jesus' name. No, no. He's got power. The power's going to do the healing. Not the prayer. Right. The prayer of faith will save the sick, but the Lord raises them up. It's the power of the Lord that raises them up. So what's He going to do? And how will you heal them if you heal them in His name? Yeah. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to Thee in the name of Jesus. Through faith in His name hath made this man whole. So if you're going to preach the kingdom fully, you're going to have to preach the name. If you don't, if you're worried about the name message, then you've got problems already because there won't be any way for you to demonstrate the kingdom. The only way power is invoked and demonstrated is in the name. And I'm going to tell you something. There ain't no blind eyes going to come open in the name of the assemblies of God or the church of God. Or the independence. Or the full gospel. Or the non denominational. Or the charismatic. Or the cruisematic. They're not going to come open that way. They won't come open in the name of the sign on your church. Now I'm going to get out of the nitty gritty. They're not going to come open in your own name. They're not going to come open in the name of a title. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father won't open blind eyes. Son won't open blind eyes. Holy Ghost won't open blind eyes. But if you'll call on who the person is, you'll invoke his full authority. And the full authority is in the name. Lord, yeah. I summed all of my place. You, you, hallelujah, you may get to see a sign on a Wednesday night. Amen. I said the power is in the name. The power is in the name. The power is in the name. When you invoke that name, he gave us what power of eternity, of eternity, the legal rights to use his name. Hallelujah. I've got power of eternity. I've got he died and left me a living will and a testament. And then he gave me the power of eternity, of, of, of eternity, well, of eternity too, to invoke. Everything yeah. is in that testament yeah. and it by his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. My dad is a father to me. He's been a machinist. He's a granddad. He's a husband. He's an uncle. He's a brother. He's a son. But them ain't his names. That's the title of who he is. If you want anything, business, transaction, glory to God to be set in stone, you can't go down there and, and, and sign for him saying, oh, this is my father. That won't work. He, hallelujah. He's been my father. Amen. For 35 years, he's been my father. But if I go down down there at the bank and just tell them that I, he's my father that won't get anything done. But if I go down there with the same name that he's got, the glory of God, then I've got access, hallelujah, because I come in his name. And I want you to know, kingdom people, know that they're here to invoke the family name in this earth, and that's the name of Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Power in that name. Now let's look a little bit at this authority and this, this the kingdom come in power. Remember the centurion who came to Jesus and said, Lord God. <laughs> oh, kill them clocks. I'm going to put little things in them and blow them up. Amen. Hallelujah. Kingdom power. Empire. The center said, my servant lies home. He's got palsy. He can't walk. He's in pain. Jesus said, that's all right. I'll come heal him. 
He said, no, 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 no. No, this is what he said. He said, I know how to take orders. I'm a man under authority. Now, if you talk about authority, you talk about the kingdom. He said, I'm a man under authority. I'm a man who knows how to take orders. Yeah. I got men under me. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to the other, and you come here, and he comes here. He said, look, I'm under your authority. I'm under your word of power. All you've got to do is speak the word, say the word, send the word, and I know it'll happen because I know that there's power in that word that you speak. Amen. He was saying to him, I know there's a way for me to get in that kingdom. I know this Jew says I can't. I know they say we centurions are outcast and we have no business coming over here. But I know somehow there's a way for me to get in the door of this kingdom. And Jesus said, I'll tell you, many like this will come over here and sit down with Abraham and Isaac in my kingdom. But he said, I'm going to take it away from this generation and give it over unto another. Hallelujah. Well, glory. That other is us. Yes. Hallelujah. I'd rather sit in the kingdom than to sit on grandma's pew. I'd rather sit in the kingdom than to sit by and so and so's window she donated and dry up. And... Oh, hallelujah. Lord, help us. My God. Hallelujah. The purpose of his bringing in the kingdom was to give it over. To another generation. In his longest sermon. The sermon on the mount. He said. Yours is the kingdom. Theirs is the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. Then in that was Matthew 5. Then in Matthew 6. He dealt with prayer. And he said. Gave them the disciples prayer. Not the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is John 17. The disciples' prayers, Matthew 6. We're not supposed to pray that prayer to invoke God now. But number one, it says, Our kingdom come. And the kingdom's already here. Yeah. And number two, nowhere in that prayer does it tell us to pray in His name. Jesus said he was bringing about a day that we would ask the Father for nothing, but we would ask in his name, and whatever we asked in his name, he had given us. Yet, oh, glory to God. I mean, if you quote that over breakfast every morning, you go right ahead. But I can tell you, there ain't no special power going to come into your life because the kingdom's here and you're still praying like you're looking for it. It's already here. Number two, all the kingdom is released when you know how to invoke the mighty name of Jesus. Right. And if you're not praying in His name, That's right. well, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Let's leave that where it lies. Surely you see that. Amen. Then in the Lord help me. What to leave out. Let's do Matthew 11. In Matthew 11, John is in prison and he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one or look we for another? Jesus said, you go tell John. Don't go tell him how many people I've got. Don't go tell him how big offers we're having. Don't go tell him. Come on. Don't go tell him who our papers are with. They didn't have no papers. He said, you go tell him. The blind are seeing the deaf are hearing, the dead are raised, and the poor is hearing the gospel. And blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Jesus went straight up in amongst the people and began to preach about John by asking them, what went you out to see? Right? He said, you went out to see somebody clothed in soft rain. Instead, you found somebody so wild, clothed in cam uh, uh, camel's hair and eating wild locusts and honey. Thank God he ate up the locusts because Joel said it was them locusts that was eating the trees up. And gee, that religious spirit was a destroying the fruit of the kingdom from coming forth. And thank God John come preaching his gospel and eating locusts. Amen. He eat up them traditions, chewed them up and spit them out. Right. He got rid of them. 
them old Pharisees come down there and all that garb they wore and he said you fellas better get right here in this water with the rest of this bunch and get baptized and repent and bring forth fruits worthy of the kingdom somebody say praise the Lord why did he tell them he's getting them locusts brother he's picking them off the tree and getting rid of them glory to God and the Bible said that when Jesus told him said instead you found that he said what went you out to see a prophet yea and I say unto you more than a prophet and yet who Whosoever is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. You couldn't take it if it wasn't here. If it wasn't right here, you couldn't take it. But because your eyes have been opened to see that all around you, there's a realm of God where you can see the impossible. You don't run over there and say, oh Lord, I wonder what folks would say if I started believing that. I wonder what they'd do if I preached that. I wonder, I wonder. No, you'd violently say, get out of my way religion. Get out of my way traditions. Get out of my way elders. Get out of my way church folk. Get out of my way and let me in there. I see a day dawning and I'm taking hold of every promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right, let me tell you something folks. When I embraced the full priest of the message of this kingdom I had everything to lose and everything to gain. I lost friends I'd had for years. Preacher friends. Glory to God, see? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, for a while there, when I got in the pulpit over here, I still had enough of contacts, you know. Hallelujah. I kept them up enough. I wouldn't even want to break them friendships. Lord God, how you going to keep up something when you can't even hardly sit in there five minutes without feeling like a fish out of water? Yeah. And I finally knew I'd either have to go whole hog or no hog it up, or I'd have to go in all the way. Amen, you can't live in the valley of decision. That's right. And I read that scripture over and over again. The Bible take it by force. The Bible take it by force. I said, my God, I'm not going to stand out here like a coward when I believe it's mine. I'm taking it by force. I'm going in all the way. I'm going to storm that city. Hallelujah. And, 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 and when he got through, he said, saying that, he said, the long prophet of John, and you take it by force. Then he got a little further down. He said, we've been quoting the scripture all, off and on all along. He said, uh, uh, thank you, Father, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent, and you've revealed them unto the babes. No man has seen God at any time save the Son, no man seen the Son, save the Father, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal himself to. Glory to God. Come unto me. Yeah. All ye that labor. He wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking to people that was tired of that religion. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Message said, are you tired? Huh? It's what he said. Are you tired and are you burnt out on religion? Come over here and get what I've got. He said, I'll give you rest. You'll find rest for your souls. He said, I'll bring you into the unforced rhythms of grace. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. My God. I got to quit on the kingdom and get on the next one. But I'll tell you. Four messages here. And I still ain't even come all the way. Jesus told him, said, listen to me. He told him, said, listen to me. Elijah's done come. That's what they all run around saying. That's what they all run around saying now. They read over in that book of Revelation about two, two prophets and they, they have hour long debates over whether it's Moses, whether it's Elijah, whether it's Enoch. If you know I so, say amen. Whether it's, uh, I don't know, whatever. As if God's going to take 
two natural men. It's been dead thousands of years. Throw them over into the earth and let them land on their feet somewhere. That's silly. It's foolish. Especially when the Bible teaches us that Elijah must come first and Jesus said if you can receive it, he's already come. Hallelujah. How did he come? He's the spirit of Elijah. Who did it come for then? John the Baptist. Ain't that what Jesus said? John the Baptist. Yet you got people honestly, earnestly believe that a natural Moses or a natural Elijah is going to get up and preach. I don't believe it. I'll tell you why in the first place. No names are given for them two witnesses. That's man-made. They're not given. You won't know who the two witnesses are. I'll tell you who the two witnesses are. You go read in Zechariah, you'll find out they're two sons of all. There's a word and there's a spirit. There's Jesus and his church. There's a king and the priest. It's witnessing to the word in this earth right now. And blessed be God forever. They kill them, leave them dead three days. We're three day people. Yeah. Jesus said destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. He said it and someone said oh then three days what are, well Jonah was dead for three days in hell. What the Bible said he said out of the belly of hell cried I and he come back from hell. And Jesus told him Bless your hearts. If Jesus went to hell, how do you think you'll buy Pace? I've got news for you. That's where he found you and I. Dead in our trespasses and sins. Glory to God forever. Hell. Guyana, the grave. That which is departed. That which is dead and buried. And Jesus said his son as Jonas was in Jonas was in the heart of the Better than the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. There's two witnesses to this kingdom tonight. The Word and the Spirit. Jesus and His church. Yeah. King and the priest. Yeah. Two sons of oil. Horror and <laughs> that all in one. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. You couldn't take this kingdom if it wasn't here. Brother is here. It ain't coming. And, and it don't come with observation no how. It's within you. Yeah. I said it's within you. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. You can't see it with a natural eye. It's in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14. The kingdom is not me. And it's not great. But it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let me get these few scriptures in real fast before we go home. And then I can start on the next line Sunday on the mystery of iniquity. I'll give you another scripture. Fear not, little flock. For it's the Father's good pleasure to give unto you his kingdom. He ain't hanging that kingdom like a juicy pork chop over your nose and making you smell it and then telling you you're going to have to wait till some glad day after a while to get in it. He's already given it over. Right. To the saints of the Most High. Right. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our pastor used to tell about a man who was walking down the road with the biggest bag and load on his shoulders. An old man came by in a wagon and stopped and said, Get on here, friend, and lighten your load. The man got on the road for miles and could still had that sack on his back. And when the driver stopped and said, Sir, why don't you lay that sack down and lighten your load? He said, Well, I thought it was enough for you to carry me. I didn't want you to have to carry my sack too. Yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's a lightning of the load in this kingdom. Jesus rolls it all off of your back and raises you up and makes you able to sit. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Would you stand tonight? My Lord, may God help us to see.
Just what we do possess. Just what realities we are walking in. What we are living in. And God helped the church to push something besides getting out of here. And start telling their people that there's an anointing for this hour. God. And for this day. And for this people to flow in. Dimensions of truth. Uh -huh. Line by line. Amen. Precept upon precept. Yes. Here a little. There a little. Yes. Kingdom living. Yes. Kingdom praying. Yes. Kingdom preaching. Yes. Kingdom healing. Yes. Kingdom everything. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Sister Heflin said that... Uh, Bless your heart. Some of you are probably ready to go, but I've been burning preachers all day. I've studied all day. But I'm going to hush. But Sister Eflin said this when Sister Louder, that's who's over the camp now since she's passed, came to that camp. She is so young in the Lord and she didn't know nothing. And they got up in the high rounds worshiping God. And she said, I had a vision. They'd been praying for years for God to hold the time so they could go preach. And it never would open. It was communist. And she said, I had a vision. And Sister Heflin said, well, what was it? And she said, I saw the shortest Chinese man you ever saw. He said, he's shorter than all of them. And said, he's heavy set and he's got a big round face like a happy face. And she said, I saw a banner over his head. And Sister Heflin said, well, what did the banner say? And she said, it said again, again. And she said, wait a minute, I'm getting some more of that vision. She said, I see that same man opening up a door, and when he reached and pulled the door open, a Bible came in that door. And Sister Heflin said, I knew it was God's confirmation once again to us that China would open, but I didn't know how soon it was. She said that week, glory to God, a little old guy that had been an emperor over there years and, and, and had been a completely out of politics in that country for 19 years suddenly came back by popularity and won the, the seat and sat down as ruler over the Chinese people one more time and said the Washington Post said, we don't know much about him, only that he's shorter than most Chinese folks. Said he's kind of chubby and he has a round face and said one of our prime minister or one of our premiers said that it looked like a happy face. Hallelujah. Just like that woman said. And the word again, you see, was because that man had once held power over there, but nobody thought he'd ever hold it again. But there was within two, within one year's time. He had totally opened the door to the nations to come in and they were able to bring the gospel and establish churches right there among the Chinese people, my God. And we're worried about whether we can pay a dumb $200 lot bill or a, or a full $500 rent payment and God's wanting us to go, hallelujah, by the Spirit from one end of this earth and to the other and bring about a kingdom revolution that will change the way people think forever and cause them to rise up and walk is God's army in this earth. Lord help us to get kingdom